Claude Shannon was an American mathematician, electrical engineer, and cryptographer. He contributed to the field of cryptanalysis for national defense during World War II and carried out foundational work on code breaking and secure telecommunications. In 1948, Shannon introduced the concepts of information content and information entropy in his paper, A Mathematical Theory of Communication, which significantly was later renamed The Mathematical Theory of Communication when he published a book on the subject. Shannon's primary goal was to find an efficient way to send messages without losing any information. He measured efficiency in terms of average message length. Thus, he was trying to devise a method for encoding messages into the smallest possible data structures without any loss of information. In other words, the decoder at the destination must be able to restore the original message losslessly. Shannon defined information entropy as the smallest possible size, on average, of lossless encoding of the messages being sent from the source to the destination. He showed how to calculate entropy, which enabled efficient use of the communication channel. The influence of the core principles of information theory has expanded far beyond its applications to coding theory. Shannon's original work has led to the development of techniques and tools that are helping to advance the efforts of practitioners in a variety of theoretical and applied fields. What is information? Information is data or knowledge communicated or received that resolves uncertainty about a particular fact or circumstance. In other words, after receiving relevant data, we will know more about a particular fact or circumstance. The greater the uncertainty resolved by the data, the more information the data has conveyed. Example, suppose you receive data about a card being drawn at random from a 52 card deck. Without any data about the chosen card, there are 52 possibilities for the identity of the card. Now suppose you receive one of the following pieces of information about the choice. Which of the following data convey the most information and which data convey the least amount of information? Use your intuition to fill out the far right column in the table. Rank your answers by assigning the letter A to the data that provides the most information. Then assign the letter B, C, and D, which should be assigned to the data that you believe provides the least amount of information. Data received. You are told that the card is a heart, or that it's not the ace of spades, or it's a black card, or it's the ten of diamonds. Quantifying information. In probability and statistics, a random variable is used to describe the behavior of a random phenomenon. For our purposes, we will always be dealing with discrete random variables that take on a finite number of values. Let x be a discrete random variable whose possible values are x sub 1, x sub 2, up to x sub n. The probability that x takes on the value x sub 1 is given by p sub 1. The probability that x takes on the value x sub 2 is given by p sub 2, and so on. This assignment of probabilities is called a probability distribution of the random variable x. 
For a discrete random variable x, Shannon defined the amount of information received when learning that x has taken on the value x sub i to be the following. Log base 2 of 1 over p sub i bits, where a bit, also referred to as a Shannon, is a binary digit whose value is 0 or 1 with equal probability. Roughly speaking, the amount of information contained in an event is inversely proportional to its probability. That is, the smaller the probability of an event, the greater its information. One very important reason a logarithm is used in Shannon's definition is to achieve additivity of information content for independent events, which is a consequence of 1. The probability of two or more independent events occurring is the product of their probabilities. 2. The logarithm of a product is the sum of the logarithms. To acquire an initial understanding of what information bits represent, please work through the following examples that map bits to the outcomes of a random variable. Example 1. Single coin toss. We only need one bit of information to represent the two possible outcomes of heads and tails. The value 1 could be assigned to heads and the value 0 could be assigned to tails. Shannon's definition. Assuming the coin is fair, that is, the coin has an equal probability of 0.5 of landing on either heads or tails, Shannon's formula yields log base 2 of 1 divided by 0.5 is equal to log base 2 of 2, which is equal to 1 bit, agreeing with our observation above. Interpretation. There is one bit of information in a fair coin toss. In other words, we say that the information content of a fair coin toss is one bit. Example 2. Double coin toss. We need no more than two bits of information to represent the four possible outcomes of heads heads, heads tails, tails heads, or tails tails. The four Two-bit strings 00, 01, 10, and 11 are sufficient to represent the four outcomes. Shannon's definition. Assuming the coins are fair, the probability is 0.25 for any one of the four outcomes to occur. Shannon's formula yields log base 2 of 1 divided by 0.25, which is equal to log base 2 of 4, which is equal to two bits again in agreement with our observation earlier. Interpretation. There are two bits of information in a fair double coin toss. Thus, we say the information content of a double coin toss is two bits. Example three, single die roll. To represent the six possible outcomes of a single six-sided die roll, three bits of information will suffice. More specifically, we could make the following assignments. 001 is assigned to one dot on the die. 010 is assigned to two dots on the die. 011 to three dots. 100 to four dots. 101 to five dots. And 110 to six dots. Shannon's definition. Assuming the die is fair, that is, the die has an equal probability of landing on any one of the six possible sides. Shannon's formula yields log base 2 of 1 divided by 1 sixth, which is approximately equal to 2.6 bits. Interpretation. There are approximately 2.6 bits of information in a single roll of a fair six-sided die. In other words, we say that the information content of a single roll of a fair six-sided die is approximately 2.6 bits. In example 3, the reader might wonder about the three-bit strings 000 and 111, which have gone unassigned. In a real sense, two bits of information 
are insufficient to represent the six possible outcomes for a die roll, while three bits are more than enough. This fact being reflected in our calculation of a non-whole number of bits. As we will see later, 2.6 bits can be viewed as the long run average number of bits per die roll needed to represent a sequence of die rolls. Information conveyed by data. Suppose the data we receive does not resolve all of the uncertainty of a situation. For example, earlier when we received the data that a randomly chosen card was a heart, some uncertainty was resolved, since we now know more about the card than we did before receiving the data. Yet, we still do not know the exact card, which means some uncertainty remains. In light of this, we can modify equation 1 from earlier as follows. Capital I of data is equal to log base 2 of 1 over P sub data. In our example, the probability that the randomly chosen card is a heart is 13 out of 52, which is equal to 0.25, which is the number of hearts divided by the total number of cards. Therefore, the information content of this received data is log base 2 of 1 divided by 0.25, which is equal to 2 bits. This example is one we encounter often. We receive some data about equally likely choices that narrow the number of remaining possibilities. The information content of such data can be calculated using equation 2. More formally, suppose we are faced with n equally probable choices, outcomes, and are provided with data that narrows the possibilities down to m choices. Since the n choices are equally likely, each has probability 1 divided by n, which implies that the probability associated with the m choices is m times 1 over n. Consequently, the amount of information received based on the above data is the following. Log base 2 of n divided by m bits. Example 1. Applying equation 4 to the previous example, setting n equal to 52 and m equal to 13, yields the following. Log base 2 of 52 over 13, which is equal to 2 bits. This means we have received 2 bits of information when learning that the randomly chosen card is a heart from the deck of 52 cards. Hence, the information content of the received data is 2 bits. Example 2. Referring to example 1, suppose by some means or another, we know that the suit of the randomly chosen card is in fact a heart. Compute the information content for data that provides us with the exact identity of the chosen card. Since we already know the suit of the card, there are 13 possible values, ace through king. Suppose the data informs you that the chosen card is the ace of hearts. To compute the information content of this data, we use n set equal to 13 and m set equal to 1, yielding log base 2 of 13 over 1, which is approximately equal to 3.7 bits. Example 3. Observe that if we had, from the very start, received data that the randomly chosen card was the Ace of Hearts, then the information content of this data would be log base 2 of 52 divided by 1, which is equal to 5.7 bits. We can summarize the calculations of the information content for examples 1, 2, and 3 in the following diagram. As the reader may have anticipated, the information content of 5.7 bits is simply the sum of the information content of the two intervening steps, which produce 2 bits and 3.7 bits, respectively. A mathematically more aesthetic depiction is as follows.
Technical reminder, the additive properties of the information content of independent events will likely not be a surprise. It is based on two fundamental properties. One, the probability of two or more independent events occurring is the product of the probabilities. And two, the logarithm of a product is the sum of the logarithms. Example four. For our final example, we provide numerical answers for the amount of information conveyed by data in table one from the previous section. Compare these to your answers from earlier. Summary. The more uncertainty that is resolved by the data, the more information we have received. For instance, learning that the original chosen random card is the Ten of Diamonds resolves all of the uncertainty regarding its identity. Hence, it has the highest information content of the data listed in the table. Whereas, learning that the card is not the Ace of Spades resolves very little uncertainty regarding the identity of the card. Hence, it has a very low information content. In the next video in this series, we will look at the concept of information entropy.